first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, O my people, I will open your graves, and have you risen from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves, that you have risen from them, I, O my people, I will put my spirit in you, that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice and suffer. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be with you. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sinfuls, wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through this Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they might believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome back, everyone. It is a great joy to be celebrating our fifth Sunday of Lent, and especially to uh, have with us uh, Deacon Jared Grossman, Deacon who just proclaimed the gospel will be ordained to the priesthood on June 6th, uh, not long from now, God willing. And of course, uh, so wonderful Father Anthony Son is with us that can celebrate this Mass, as well as Joe Shanks, who's uh, helping out with the uh, uh, techniques, and is our lector. Thank you. Fifth Sunday of Lent came quickly. I hope. 
that the coronavirus is making it a good Lent for everyone. I hope it's not taking away the precious time that we spend with our Lord, but doing just the opposite. And I invite you, if you haven't already, to spend some extra time with this Gospel. You know, this year, a, the sequence of, of Gospels during Lent are just the best. They're phenomenal. And there's a lot in them. There's a lot of imagery. It's very wonderful to go to those places where Jesus was and to imagine his face and those with whom he's speaking. And there's so many beautiful uh, actors in this passage. That we have Lazarus and his sisters, whom he loved, his death, his rising from the dead. All these great things are taking place. And they're just wonderful prayers to use that, that we call it Ignatian method of prayer, or going there and using our imagination, placing ourselves there, pretending to see everyone who's there in the background, what's happening, and, and to be there with our Lord, and to take in the scene, to place ourselves in His presence, and to let Him speak to our hearts in whatever way that our Lord desires to. These last couple of weeks, draw our attention to um, something that can be understood in a spiritual way to help us have a deeper understanding to our passage that we just heard. So in the third, first, third week of Lent, two weeks ago, remember the reading that we had the Gospel was the woman at the well. We could say um, representing something that we all have in our lives is thirst. Last week's was the man born blind. And again, something I think that frequently we experience in our own lives is spiritual blindness. And then this week, more radically, Lazarus' death, one that gives us the opportunity to think about our own spiritual death. In fact, as we stop and think about it, it's one of the hardest struggles that our ego has, as recognizing that we are not in control, and taking care of the deepest thirsts that we have, our deepest desires, or our blindness, can we even recognize at times our own blindness in the spiritual life? And then that little bit of death, or for some people, maybe for some of us today, there's a real death that's taking place in our relationship with the Lord. Maybe we're feeling distant because we don't trust God anymore because of this virus that's happening. And some people I know are thinking, well, you know, God must be punishing us, or God must love us, and all these different thoughts that enter our mind. Instead of truly being and recognizing what this is for us, this great opportunity to recognize in our own souls is there something in our relationship with God that has died that needs to be resurrected? And so one of the great principles of our, our Christian spirituality is that rec that simple recognition is that we cannot bring ourselves back to life. We cannot give ourselves sight. We cannot do the things that only are powered by God. We cannot heal ourselves. And of course, as we look to our Lord, He is not just a teacher. Yes, our Lord is a great teacher, but we call to mind that He is a Savior. And that means what a healer. The word salve we have. What is a salve? Something we put on a wound to help it heal. And our Lord comes into to heal us. He comes to give us strength to take every thirst that we have, to give us sight in any blindness that we have, and indeed to give us life. If there's any doubt that's taking place in our souls, anything that's bringing us unhappiness, anything that takes away our closeness to the Lord. In our gospel today, Jesus weeps over the death of his friend Lazarus. There are three times that our Lord weeps. The first time is the young girl who our Lord brings back to life. If you recall, he says to her, Talitha Kuhn. The young girl rides and she gets up. And then the second one is the uh, boy, older than the girl is, uh, still living with his mother, and she loses her only son. And Jesus brings him back to life. And then today, Lazarus, who's totally dead, four days in the tomb, we're reminded by his sister, Lord, there must be a stench on St. Augustine gives us an understanding in a spiritual way that these three different deaths have, can refer to three different deaths in our own lives or different times in our life. The one of the little girl being that she just reaches that age where she begins 
as we all do at that age, as we develop our consciences, to become our own people and letting our ego take over instead of recognizing our complete dependence upon God and nurturing that friendship. With the young man, again, love and labor in life. Again, a whole other array of sins and distractions and things that lead us away from the Lord. And then finally, Lazarus, total death, complete separation from God. Four days, that is doorman, irretrievably dead. And so it gives us the opportunity to look at our own lives. Does that help us to see in any way where we might find our relationship with the Lord on this fifth Sunday of Lent? I said this three times that Jesus wept. Well, those are three deaths, I'm sorry, in the gospel. The three times Jesus weeps, the first time is over Jerusalem, uh, over her loss of faith. And then in Gethsemane, where the Lord goes to pray before his arrest and the beginning of his passion, where he's filled with great sorrow and grief. And then the third time here at this tomb of Lazarus, which we just saw. And so I invite you to take this passage and spend some time with our Lord. What is it like to see a God who weeps over his creatures? St. Ignatius of Loyola would uh, give us the opportunity to say, you know, you really need to try to place yourself in that scene. Think of something sorrowful. Think of something that brings sorrow to your own life. I just think the other day, it was so difficult last Tuesday night as I received the letter from Bishop Fulda to announce that the Masses would end last Tuesday before last. And actually, I just printed the letter off and brought it with me to our finance committee meeting. I kind of glanced at it. I had an idea what was on it. And so I read it since I was with the committee. And it was very hard. I was moved to tears, and I couldn't read it for a couple minutes because I was able to imagine what it was like for Bishop Folga to sign it. To know how many people would be affected by this decision. And knowing how hard that would be for him to do. And for all the faithful, that the source and summit of our faith, the Eucharist, would be something that would be put on hold. Or whatever might have happened in your life, imagine another one is just imagine your enemy weeping. Imagine something happened to someone who just you can't stand in this world. Imagine them breaking down and crying. And then stop to think about our Lord. That our Lord loves us so much that he cries over our sinfulness. He cries over our sins because it takes away our happiness. How do you sympathize with God? Well, we look at the face of Jesus as he weeps over our own sinfulness. Our God is so loving, he responds with tears. And so do whatever it takes to go to that place. Ask our Lord for the gift of tears. Ask for some, Lord, I want to be there and see your face. To cry over those you love. Not just Lazarus. Over each of us. And then as the scene progresses, calling to mind that when Jesus says something, it's not like us. We say things that we see happen. When Jesus says something, it's like in the Genesis, the beginning of the world. When God speaks, it comes into being. And so after they rolled the tomb, the stone away from the tomb, and again, how much does that remind us of Jesus' own death and resurrection that's about to take place? All the imagery is the same. And so after they removed the tomb, it says Jesus was deeply disturbed and perturbed. He yells out in a loud voice. He calls, Lazarus, come out. Imagine how John, that must have been for the crowd, to hear Jesus shouting out. As you pray this passage, put your name in place. Hear our word calling your name. Calling you back to the light, to greater light, to a deeper relationship with our Lord. 
and the wonderful opportunity to enter into a greater peace with our Lord. We call to mind that every word that Jesus speaks brings into reality. And that's one of the most awesome things at Mass. Because it's not the priest, it's not Ray Cartwright who's saying, this is my body, and that bread becomes Jesus. Or this is my blood, and that wine becomes our Lord's precious blood. But it's Jesus himself. And because he says it, it happens. And he calls each of us, Raymond, come out. Joseph, come out. Antony, come out. Jared, come out. Place your name there. Hear our Lord call you. And finally, if need be, during these last uh, days of Lent, I invite you to call the office and take advantage of the sacrament of penance. It was a beautiful uh, letter I received this week from one of our parishioners. She writes in it, Dear Father Cartwright, thank you so much for talking about the sacrament of penance. You convinced me to go after 35 years. And I've gone three times since then. Thank you for sharing that letter, because it's important to remind us the treasure that we have. And especially, too, a lot of times people think, well, I'd be great sins. That's all right. It's just nice to come and visit your loved one, to be with the Lord. Lord, the little things, anything that bothers you. And then, too, the lies that we believe. It's just so heartbreaking as a priest to see how often people carry around with them a lot of sorrow and misery, a lot of shame and guilt. The things they shouldn't. The things our Lord doesn't want us to carry with us. He wants us to always grow closer and have greater peace and love. So make that your prayer of the Sunday. Spend some time with our Lord at the tomb. Commiserate with our Lord in his tears. Cry with him. Hear his voice calling you to greater love. That all leaders and members of the church may be graced with the guidance and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agendas and seek justice and equality for the people under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and made confident in the hope of resurrection for their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the members of this faith community may receive the mercy of God for themselves, and with his help, offer it to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead and all those who have died may know the joy and fullness of life in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, in whom we live and move and have our very being, grant us every petition we ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, because for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, because for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of it will become our spiritual faith. Let us be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father of all. Hear us, Almighty God, that having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. We did right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as a true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and his eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and have created, and you have created, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering for you, so that we may obtain an inheritance in the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed Apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant position in your presence we rise and unfailing them. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your Muslim church on earth, with your servant Francis Apostle, John our Bishop, the Honor of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have made for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind attendance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for by divine teaching, we hear his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. May the us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. On your standing, quiz
We pray, Almighty God, that we, we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your hand. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you, and do thou the prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of